this is Professor Cummings and I wanted to start a video here that is going to cover static equilibrium as well as a little bit on um, the coordinate system and using a coordinate system. It's kind of going through a strength of materials concepts but you know it kind of applies to all the engineering mechanics and one way of approaching this is with this what's on the screen which is Newton's second law of motion. Uh, in this states that a force acting on an object will change its direction by ch changing a, either its speed or its direction or both. Excuse me, changing its velocity by either changing its speed or direction or both. And keep in mind that velocity is a vector made up of speed and direction. So it can change either speed or direction or both. And this is what gets you this equation. Force is equal to mass times acceleration because you know, you're applying a force to a mass and you're getting an output which is a changing or an you know an acceleration so you're causing the object to accelerate now another way of looking at this another way of looking at this and I saw it stated once and thought it was a, a good way of stating it and I use this in some of my other classes is this whole idea that when an unbalanced force acts on a particle the particle will accelerate in the direction of the force with a magnitude that is proportional to the force. Same basic concept, but now they use a little bit different wording that I want you to keep in mind. It's an unbalanced force, meaning that there is a force and you know basically a net force acting on a particle, and that's what causes the acceleration. Now keeping that in mind, now let's let's look at what static equilibrium is. So static equilibrium is basically saying there can be forces on an object, but there can't be net forces on it. Basically, you know, you have to have a balance of zero. So you have to be a balanced force. So it can't be net forces on it. Otherwise, the net force would make the object accelerate. And that is known as static equilibrium. So you have uh, balanced forces, you know, versus, you know, unbalanced forces on the object. And that is when it's static equilibrium. It will keep the object from accelerating. So you're not seeing any acceleration. So static equilibrium is the difference between, you know, a particle moving, in this case a vehicle, and it's got a force going in one direction, and it's got a force going in the other direction. This is the drag force. And since there is a net force between them, you have acceleration. Static equilibrium is like a balanced seesaw. You know, the forces are literally balanced, and in this case, the moments are balanced on this object. So that is static equilibrium. So now let's think about this in terms of strength of materials, right? So keep in mind that force is a vector. It's got a magnitude and direction. And for static equilibrium, the net forces have to equal zero. So this is where we start looking at a free body diagram you know this free body diagram where you actually have, have to balance the forces so when we look at a free body diagram you have to consider that the sum of the forces acting on an object in one direction needs to be balanced out in the equal and opposite direction so that that net force comes down to zero all right so you do have a net force or in this case net moment you know bending moments also come out to zero you know, so this is the state of static equilibrium for all these you know, different particles that we're looking at. Now, you also notice that there is signs on each one of these. So these are forces. These actually have a magnitude and they actually have a direction to them. Now, the way we deal with those, the, uh, the direction is with using a sign convention. So again, remember, we're talking about static equilibrium. You know, so there can't be any net forces. So that means that the forces that are being applied to an object have to have a reaction force that's equal and opposite. You know, so what happens, you end up with this sign convention that demonstrates the various forces and their directions. You know, and you put this in your free body diagram. So your free body diagram, you know, as in another video, we actually can see the free body diagram actually depicts the forces and all their reactions on a body. You know, you can think of this, these forces and these opposing forces, these balancing forces to get you to a net zero as like an accountant keeping a ledger, 
you know, in your triangle or a balance sheet. You've got forces going in one direction. And since it's in static equilibrium, it has to equal zero. So you've got to have forces going in the opposite direction if it's in static equilibrium. You know, and this is where the whole idea of the main forces for strength and materials comes from. This is the idea of having an applied force or applied load and support reactions. You know, also bending moments. And if you're going to do go further into your analysis, you know, the internal reactions, which are also still in static equilibrium. So let's go back and look at this, you know, the whole idea of forces having a net result of zero, as well as being able to acknowledge the direction. So this is what, what we have up at the left is, you know, that signifies our coordinate system. Now your coordinate system is designed and developed by you as you're solving the problem. You know, this is a more conventional uh, uh, coordinate system where you have a, for two dimensions and you have X going to the right, Y going up, and your moments are going counterclockwise. And all those are representing the positive direction. So that way you can have a notation that when you look at your forces, you set up your free body diagram and you start considering, okay, what are what's all being applied? What's all the support reactions and what are the moments that are coming from this you can depict them in a way that you can show in your balance that you're balancing the book so to speak and you expect the summation of everything to reach a zero so you have no net force or a net force equal to zero as well as your, your moments so little written out the system helps to establish how the forces and moments interact with one another and create a state of static equilibrium Right, so you're creating that state of static equilibrium in your in, in, you know, when you do do your analysis you know so that's where we get that summation of forces equals zero or you can look at it as a summation of all the positive forces plus the summation of all the negative forces is equal to zero you know so the same comes to the same thing now like I said this is a fairly standard fairly conventional sign uh, coordinate system you know, with going positive to the right horizontally, going positive vertically going up, and going positive in moment, uh, counterclockwise or anticlock. Those are all po those are all the positive directions. But that's not the only way that that can happen. Like I said, it depends on you know the situation, the circumstances that you would like to represent those forces. And so you can change them as you need, but you have to abide by it once you've established it otherwise your balance sheet would not uh, work out you would not end up with with a state of static equilibrium so it's not unusual to see situations where your coordinate system has been rotated you know basically to make things a little easier on yourself but like I said it has to be able to track down you know keep track of everything that's going on and this you know your less straightforward problems this is when you really do benefit from having a coordinate system. Like I said, so this one still looks like a fairly simple, fairly typical problem of a really basic truss. But as you see, as you go through this truss, there's all sorts of directions that you're going to have to keep track of. So you might want, so you want to keep a coordinate system that you can abide by, you know, and you also have to deal with this going in various directions an X a Y, if you're doing two directions and more complicated versions, a Z direction. Yeah. So this is Professor Cummings. Just wanted to make a quick video on this topic. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel as I go through this class of strength and materials. I'll add more videos. Uh, also go ahead and uh, either like the video, share the video, or even dislike the video. Though uh, those all keep it bumped up in the algorithm, uh, as well as making a comment uh, that you might have. And if there's any other uh, problem that you kind of want us to go through or want me to go through, go ahead and leave that as a comment. That will be a pretty constructive thing to do. All right. I will talk to you later.